Okay, hi everyone, I'm, I guess I spoke with quite a few people today, um, but my name is Katie, I work for ThoughtWorks. I um, feel a little bit like a, a fraud here today because I'm probably one of the few people that are not sort of um, technical. I'm actually a graduate recruiter for ThoughtWorks, um, but clearly a lot of the things that we're discussing today are challenges that are relevant to ThoughtWorks as a company, and certainly very relevant to me in my kind of day-to-day -day role, um, yeah, and a lot of the challenges that we talked about around schools and universities. Um, so I've just got a few slides and sort of some things I wanted to say. I'm probably going to um, yeah, try and elaborate a little bit on what I was going to say, having had discussions with, um, with everybody you know, today. So I was going to start off, actually, <laughs> sort of a, an anecdote from um, thinking back to when I was at school and what IT meant kind of for me. Um, and pretty much the only thing that I can recall from doing IT in school is, is playing on paint. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, uh, sort of stereotypical geeky IT teacher um, trying to talk about Excel and kind of web processing. Um, wasn't really able to engage with a group of students, and as a result, to have a class full of you know people seemingly busy and sort of quiet, um, we were able to kind of play around. And, and actually, hearing people talk today about some of the tools, you know, Scratch that we've seen dem demoed, and um, kind of all the other ones uh, from Ian, I think, earlier. You know, that kind of um, wanting to play around with things at school, actually, you probably could have done a lot more in those IT lessons just sort of playing around on, on using some of the other programs. So, um, so my sort of IT background probably stayed that way until I actually joined ThoughtWorks and, and you know, started thinking about um, IT and software and, and a lot of the issues that we're talking about today. Um, yeah, so I'm just really going to say a few words on um, ThoughtWorks experiences in working with educators, so working with schools and universities, um, and then also sort of adding to the discussion we've already had about what we specifically look for in software developers. Okay, so um, first of all, I want to kind of give a couple of examples of things that we've done at ThoughtWorks and um, to engage with schools. So I've just put two examples up there. Um, the first one, well, actually, before I do that, you know, the idea behind some of the initiatives that we've done with schools is purely around getting people excited and inspired and interested to think that IT is cool and it's fun and that you can create something and develop something. Um, you know, and we didn't really get onto too much kind of techie stuff. It was really just kind of giving them ideas um, and hoping that they would sort of take that away and think about going and exploring this um, further down the line. So one of the examples was we worked with a school in Hackney. It was actually through a broader programme around the Olympics called the Primary Ambassadors Programme, I think. Um, so they worked with a number of businesses across different disciplines. And um, obviously as being software and IT, we were sort of thinking of something that incorporated that and was relevant for the Olympics. So we got a group of um, sort of seven, eight year olds developing a website or building a website, creating a website for the Olympics. And um, so I should have it. Oops. Okay, so that's the website that, that, that this group created. Um, I mean, the way that I can, yeah, I mean, the link will be on here, but um, the way that we sort of went about that, you know, we didn't spend so much time kind of playing around with, with coding, but we got them to think about how you take an idea and a concept and actually build it into something um, that is, is real and is relevant to them. So we've got a group of seven, eight roles thinking about ideas, concepts for this website, what content they wanted to be on there, who it was going to be for, um, and really sort of working with uh, ThoughtWorks to working with ThoughtWorks to do some kind of simple coding. So just you know changing the layout, changing the colours on the website. Um, so it was fantastic. Here. We got a group of uh, seven, eight year olds excited about IT. Hurrah! That was kind of what we set out to do. Um, we're actually going on to do a longer term project with them, sort of starting now and, and leading to the run up to the Olympics next year. Um, we're doing six sessions to further develop that site. Uh, so that's one example of something that we've done. A second one was we worked with a secondary school and um, year 12 groups, that's sort of 17, um, 17 age group. Um, we got them all into a room and we split them into groups and we set them a challenge of developing an app to get people going to the cinema. So kind of quite broad, um, but hopefully something that they can relate to. And again, we sort of went through our concept ideas and um, thinking about a person that this was for, doing a prototype just kind of um, on you know, uh, post-its and paper and then presenting that back. So again, there was, they came into our office actually to do this, so you can imagine it's kind of quite high energy. We've got quite a small office um, and a group of you know, students in there, and again, it was just about inspiring them. The, the post-its that were up there um, was at the end of the day, we asked them you know, what they're taking away from the day, what, what have they learned, and what had it meant to them. And a, a lot of it is actually around the stuff that we were hoping for. You know, it was fun 
I learned that IT's not boring, I learned that you can talk to people, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, so there are a couple of examples of things that we've done. I think the issue that we've talked about here today is that it's great to do things like that, but how do you take those ideas and sort of roll them out to impact on a wider group and not necessarily people who are just going to go into software, but, but you know, people who are going to be able to take these skills that are relevant to, to all walks of life. Uh, something that I've kind of been thinking about from the conversations that we've had today is then how do you translate that? You know, some of the guys at the back have been saying fantastic things that they're doing with their, with their younger students and then they kind of send them off to the next stage and they kind of lose that interest and that excitement because perhaps there's, there's sort of some gap there. Um, I think it's about kind of taking that passion and inspiration and then trying to make it relevant. So doing things that, um, like building that website for the Olympics and building an app, things that kind of mean something to them. And when we get into universities and higher education, um, the stuff that, that sort of Chris was talking about, it's around taking that, that passion and those ideas and that theory and that knowledge and actually um, making it not just relevant, but actually thinking about how you can help um, provide business value or how you can help sort of solve the world, you know, kind of with, with software, with great software, take on some of these challenges. Um, so some of the things that we've done to try and demonstrate this with, with universities are kind of running workshops or guest lectures um, really around sort of some of the you know the softer skills the client facing skills how do you engage with your customer and um, we have a, an exercise at ThoughtWorks so you may know or have done, done similar things um, but we play with Lego with our you know our consultants go out and take Lego into our client organisations and kind of use um, this sort of setup to demonstrate some of the agile practices or the importance of involving customers. So we've kind of gone around sessions like that with the universities as well. Um, so you know, it's all sort of aligned to the stuff that Chris was talking about really. Uh, yeah, and that's obviously a picture of the picture of the Lego game there. Uh, and I, I think the thing actually just to mention on that is is you know really trying to get into people's minds the, the challenges around software development. So it's not just an isolated problem or an isolated program or something that they're building, but it's really kind of real world problems. So how do you actually expand that and take it out? And um, we've, we've sort of already talked a little bit about you know, what people look for in, in software developers. Um, some of you <laughs> will probably disagree with some of the things I've put up here. Um, I guess I was trying to stick, you know, stay clear of um, listing up a bunch of you know technologies or practices or things that we expect people to have learned because actually when we strip all that away there are some sort of fundamental things that we look for in all of our developers all of our programmers and um, but particularly things that are important for us to assess uh, for graduates coming into the business so a passion you know that thing I was talking about people who are excited about technology people who are excited about wanting to deliver better software people who in their own time kind of go and you know, play around with these programs, who go to user groups, who talk to other people, who have influence outside of the university. Um, it's quite easy to spot the people that have been doing that. I think it can be maybe a bit unfair if you're walling people out because they haven't done that, because actually they've not been encouraged in, in university and through education. And, you know, perhaps it's not something that they've kind of really had any, had any involvement with. Um, but that's one thing that we look for. I've put, you know, uh, interest and in, in knowledge in, uh, around latest technology. So again, and you're going out there and kind of finding it out for yourselves. Um, understanding and experience of agile. Um, you know, agile is not it's not a new thing. It's not something that we're kind of going out talking about specifically anymore. Um, but it is, you know, it's fundamental to what we do and what, what, what everybody's doing. So there needs to be some understanding of how, what those practices are and how, again, how that kind of translates into real business value and what we're trying to do. And finally, consulting skills. You know, ThoughtWorks is a consultancy, so we, we need people who want to take those skills and, again, take it out of the context of just building something just because it's cool or, you know, just sort of an isolated project and really trying to think about how that addresses some of the challenges um, and can deliver value to organisations, to wider problems, to society, and all of these kind of big picture, big picture things. Um, so I think that was pretty much, pretty much it. Um, yeah. Does anyone have any questions um, or any kind of more discussion from that? How, how much do you do you, find, do you find it easy to find those 
University education at all? Um, I wouldn't say it's a fault. I think it's, uh, you know, there are kind of a number of things, obviously, as we've talked about today, that are factors in there being a gap between where people come out of education and what people in industry are looking for. Um, I think it's actually less of, for me personally, when I'm kind of talking to people and thinking, you know, sort of spotting people that I think have great potential and are going to be good at ThoughtWorks, it's less about what university they've been to and what they've been taught. We've hired people who've gone to a university where it's been very waterfall and they haven't really done any agile, but through other sort of influences, whether that was they got an internship or they, you know, they know somebody, kind of friends and friends and family or, or, or someone of that nature who's kind of inspired them to go and look for these things. Once they've started rooting around and looking into agile, looking into new technologies, then they're really excited about it and then they're the kind of person that's sort of, you know, ready um, to come and join ThoughtWorks, even if technically we say actually, you know, right now they're not writing great code, but they've got the right approach, they can talk about it, and you know, they, they get why it's not a good approach, they understand what we're trying to do when we're delivering to customers. Do you take interns? Do you take interns? Um, uh, we've taken on a couple of interns. At the moment, we don't have an internship program kind of up and running. Um, and if, you're, if you're serious to work with universities, you know, that is one of the really well working. Projects. We have a, a placement program, about a, a very well developed one for many years. About 60% of our students go to an internship for a whole is that, year. Is that sandwich to a 12? Yeah, it's between the second and third year. And no, you, mean for, for, you mean for the summer or for a whole year? A whole year. Oh, for a whole year. <coughs> a whole year. And, and because it's a whole year, you know, they don't just end up, you know, writing a bit of documentation. So they, they become, they work like proper employees. They, they often do very high quality, very interesting work. Um, for the employers, that's like a year-long job interview. You know, um, yeah. many of them get employed by the companies they were placed in afterwards. They come back and do their final year, and then go straight back into the company. It's a great way to get information exchange both ways. You know, where it feeds back into the universities, what what um, is out there. It's a fantastic motivator for the students. Mm -hmm. uh, we find that in their third year, the students who have done a placement are much better motivated, you know, they suddenly, they suddenly believe us what we're telling them, you know, because they've seen that it actually, you know, it actually is useful. Um, and for, for um, employers, it, it gets you in contact with the university, it, it allows you to feedback and you get, you get the first pick of the best graduates. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, I can completely see the value in, in internships or kind of sandwiches, and it's something that we've talked about. And, and actually, you know, we had a discussion around: okay, would it be better to get people for a few weeks over the summer, um, or would it be better to take people on for a full year? And actually, we came to the same conclusion: you know, we want people for a full year because in our business model at ThoughtWorks, if they come in for a couple of weeks, realistically, we're not going to be able to put them out onto a client site, and you know, with, with our customers it's kind of more difficult to, to present that as an option then when we're talking to customers um, and what are they really going to get from it and, and what are we going to get from it but we think that if we could do that over a 12 month period by the end of it you know they're, they're going to be um, you know not dissimilar to sort of when some of our kind of graduates maybe come and join us initially so so yeah I, I guess <laughs> I sort of talked about why, why it's so great why haven't we done it yet um, you know honestly a number of things we haven't really figured out how we can Incorporate that into into our you know our business model. So thinking that everybody is out on client sites, so that's kind of a challenge for us. Um, yeah, I'm sort of. You have to work as a like sort that. of an apprenticeship model. Yeah. I mean, I've seen this work in other outputs. I'd be really interested to find out from, you know from people who have made it. You work have to second them to to somebody. You know, they have to be shadowing somebody. I think, Especially yeah. in that, you know, where exactly. people are being farmed out. Yeah. yeah. So I'd be interested to know if um, any kind of 
the companies have thought work size because I think that's important as well. You know, sort of the Accenture's IBMs and um, with Microsoft, it, you know, it, it's sort of bigger and maybe a different approach. Um, so I'd be interested to find out <coughs> from companies who have that made that and made that a success. Do you have to do remedial work with the people that you do recruit? And if so, what's the nature of the remedial work? Um, Sorry, what, what kind of things do you mean? Well, you say you, there's a lot of people that you don't recruit because they don't have what you've got. Do you manage to recruit people who have everything that you need and you can use them straight away? Or do you have to do an initial training program? And if so, what do you have to give them? Yeah, okay. So, um, actually, I sort of didn't mention it up there, um, but we have a six-week program and people join ThoughtWorks, which is our ThoughtWorks University. So all of our graduates join us, and it, this isn't kind of a training program. We don't sit them in a classroom and go, okay, this is how you write test-driven code, and this is continuous integration. And um, we sort of do a bit of an overview of, you know, this is how ThoughtWorks deliver a project, and and then we get them doing the project. So it's actually out of our India office over in Bangalore, um, and we recently changed the model from kind of more of a classroom and um, sort of six weeks to a real project. So we've got some clients, some real clients. Um, mainly kind of not-for-profit organisations who are going to really benefit from, from the kind of software that we're going to deliver for them, but are okay with, you know, the sort of risk that, not the risk, but the, um, you know, safe in the knowledge that actually this is, these are people who are still learning. So they then come back to the UK or, um, you know, our American, our Australian offices, wherever they come, they come from, having had a real, a real cycle of a, of a ThoughtWorks project. And um, so that's kind of our sort of training and then obviously once they get back, you know, they're, they're onto a real project that so they're working with more experienced developers. Um, but, you, you know, we require a certain level of kind of technical ability and a certain level of the right sort of person, the right attributes to enable them to be successful after just that six week period. Um, so yeah, it's more of a deduction than a remediation. Yeah, yeah. Does, that kind of, does, that, does that answer your question? Yeah. That, that's pretty normal though, isn't it? I mean, I, as a trainer, I do a lot of work with, with companies um, that have graduate programs where for the first six to eight weeks they just mm. they do a lot of training and induction stuff and that's where a lot of my business comes from is, is to some extent filling a gap in terms of practical skills. So couldn't you go and do that? Does anybody need to know about Agile? You said in your first list of things you said knowledge of Agile for example. Yeah. So having, having been sympathetic, being willing to learn fast that's all something, but knowledge, do you really, I mean, is that, is that what you want universities to I teach? Was that, so was that referring to the software developers that you hire in as opposed to grads? Um, so, know. I mean, that's cross board. I mean, that is a good question. I guess I hadn't really differentiated, and I know we had sort of um, discussions earlier about, you know, kind of knowledge and, and skill. Um, I think what I mean when I say that is that, you know, we've said we're looking for these passionate people, these interested people who have kind of tried to get some external influence that's come up again kind of a few times a day so that you know even if what the content of what you're being taught in universities is you feel not maybe relevant you've actually got enough understanding of what is relevant to go and what is current to go out and find it so when people come to us and have, have never you know the word agile is completely new to them that's kind of an, that in itself we it's not an issue because we can teach that but you know that's kind of an indication that maybe they haven't really broadened um you know they've just sort of been happy to take in all of the waterfall stuff that their course is taught so that's i think what i mean around that um is it a prerequisite for graduates to have computer sciences degrees uh, no uh, well even programmers no it's not it's not a prerequisite to have a um a software degree or a computer science degree, no, not at all. Um, what so it is how do you do that with graduates then? I mean, this is specifically graduates, because obviously if you've got three or four years experience and you haven't got a computer science degree, it's easier if you do that way. Right? You've got the experience. But. So, the same things apply. Um, we were kind of having a conversation, I forget who was that earlier, but um, you know, around yeah, seeing people with computer science degrees who we feel don't quite fit the skill set. Um, but then we see people who don't have computer science degrees who we feel do, do fit the skill set. It's obviously more difficult because they're, they're starting from a different level. So what we do sort of have is a, it's not defined, you know, we don't say you've got to have done, got to this level or this stage or done this X amount of programming, but the sort of prerequisite is that you have to come to us with some knowledge of Java, prefer preferably, um, programming to actually be able to carry out the technical test that we're going to send you. We're going to take into consideration that you've done a physics degree and you've actually only spent a month doing Java, you know, that's real examples of people that we've had come to us. Um, we take that into consideration, but actually 
the way that you approach that code, it's not about the syntax, it's not that stuff we can teach, but the way that you approach it, you know, the way that you, the kind of simple and um, the elegance of the code that you're sending us, those kind of things are the things that we look for. Um, you know, even sort of the, the test-driven development stuff, if you haven't been doing development or programming um, for enterprise software, then you, you might not come across that and that's okay. So, yeah, does that sort of answer? No, absolutely. I mean, I think you'd, you'd expect from a, a, a graduate who hasn't got a computer science degree, who wants to get into computing, that they've done a lot of programming okay. anyway. Yeah. It's just that I think something that frustrates me a lot, and it sounds like a lot of people don't, here don't do that, is you see... Um, at job descriptions and they say must have a 2-1 in computer science as a yeah. prerequisite and then you're just missing a huge pool of people who are probably in many cases better than the, the computer science people so yeah. no, it's, it's great then it's great. Folks we're coming up on 4.30 so 30 so